Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today is going to be a rather exciting day. Now, what I'll do is turn the camera away from my ugly mug and we will look at what we've got here. We've got this lovely big package which has arrived from China. It is a full top of the range Win Wing HOTAS setup. So that consists of the Super Taurus uh, throttle and base console that we'll look at and the uh, Libra stick, presumably with extension. As well as that, we are going to compare it to other HOTAS's that we've got here. Now this is not in any way a professional video, it's not a review, I've not done a lot of research for this, this is just telling you why I'm going where I'm going. So first, disclosure, I am now officially sponsored, or GR should I say, are officially sponsored by Win Wing. So this package here, which is worth a lot of money, has come for free. Thank you very much Tony and for everyone for sorting that out, that's much appreciated. Now that said, the cool thing about this is that I haven't been told to say anything, or not to say anything. I actually just haven't been told, well, anything really. So as far as I'm aware, I can just say what I want, say it as I see it, which is what I plan to do today. Hopefully I won't get in trouble. So this is what we would call a Pro Series Advanced HOTAS, and it's about time that I switch to one of these. I've been currently be using what we call an Intermediate HOTAS, and we'll explain those categories in a minute. And I've been doing this for five, nearly six years, and technically uh, I am a professional virtual pilot now, I know that sounds weird, and it is about time I move to a Pro HOTAS. So, let's look at the different types of HOTASs. We've got four categories. One, beginner. That is, for instance, you will be able to buy now a T-Flight HOTAS 4. I used a Thrustmaster HOTAS X back in the day, five or six years ago. I don't think they make that anymore. Cost, nowadays, they seem to have gone up. They're about $150 to $170 that I can find at the time of making this video on Amazon. Other shops are available. Back five or six years ago, when I was buying the equivalent HOTAS X, they cost about $100 delivered, about £70 sterling. Why they've gone up so much, I don't know. There seems to be a massive jump in sales of all HOTASs across the board. Everything's sold out. I know those are sold out. I know those are sold out. I know those are sold out. And these, I think, are sold out. Everything very sold out at the moment. Next is the Intermediate Series. This would be an Intermediate Series. Cost uh, about $200 to $300 around there. This is a Logitech X56. Now, I swear by them. Uh, if you're an inter into an Intermediate setup, I love these things. They're Intermediate because they've got all of the controls pretty much that a professional stick has. You can see there, I've done proper videos about these so you can go back and look at them, but the quality is intermediate. This is all plastic and kind of wobbly. Now if you don't mind that, then it's been fine. However, this is starting to get old now. I've used it every day for, what, four years now and I bought it secondhand and it's starting to get clunky and it's starting to wear out and it's no good. Got to go to a Pro Stick. Next category is the Pro Series, which consists of an entry, and an advanced. So an entry level pro would be, for instance, this, a Thrustmaster Warthog. I'm sure you guys all know what this is. This is basically a copy, if you like, of the A10C aircraft, uh, HOTAS, so stick and throttle. The main difference you'll notice is that, look, I'll pick it up with my little finger, that weighs a few grams, you know, maybe a quarter of a kilo. That, <laughs> that's honestly five kilos more maybe than that. That weighs twice as much as my cat. It's metal, it's heavy duty, it's many times better quality in terms of, uh, you know, the finish and the general make than an intermediate series. Now, I was given this, I get given lots of stuff, but I'm very lucky like that. A very generous donator gave this to me uh, two years ago, I think now. No, maybe a year and a half ago. And I've just never switched over to it. I've tried and I just never could get on with this. Now, that's not to say there's anything bad about it. It's just it was never right for me. So, for instance, this cost me a grand total of £80, $100 uh, back in the day. I bought it second hand. And that means that I could configure it uh, to exactly how I like. I took all this apart because it doesn't matter if I broke it. It's not worth much money. Uh, and I got rid of all the tensioning equipment and now it's just floppy. Floppy like that. You see, it just flop. Uh, and that's exactly how I like it. This super floppy. Oh, everything's removed. It's got down to its absolute basics and it's super floppy. That's how I like it. Now, the problem why I didn't go to the Warthog, well, the first reason is that is very stiff compared to that. And I just can't get it, uh, even if I mess around with the internals, I can't get it as, as free and wobbly as that. And I know most people don't want that, which is, you know, one of the reasons why this is more expensive, but I do. I want it smoother and uh, I just want it looser, okay? It's the best way I can describe it. And the same with this. Um, you can turn the um, uh, stiffness down a bit, but not very much. What I could do is go inside to the guts of this and remove the tensioner again, but 
I'm not going to do that because I'm not rich and this is worth $500 and that's another thing we should speak about. One more reason, X56, turning knob there, really really cool uh, and I rely on that now for zooming in and out which is how me with my terrible old man eyes relies to play the game. There's nothing like that on this, the nearest I've got is a tensioner which is down here and it's just not a good, it's not a good feel and I struggle to do that, okay? So those are the reasons why I never got onto that because I just wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. So, uh, well, before I interrupted myself, we were talking about the series. This is the Entry Level Pro Series, and this is going to be around about $500. Yes, they always fluctuate up and down $100 here and there, but at the moment, they're about $500. Then we get to the Advanced Pro Series. Uh, examples are Win Wing, uh, Taurus and uh, Libra combo here. Another example would be Verpal. I don't know actually anything about them, but I know for the same setup, roughly, we've worked out is about the same cost. What we've got in these two boxes uh, is pretty much the full setup, and it costs about $1,000. So, 150 to 200, 300, 500, about $1,000 as they stand. So, the next thing we're going to do is unbox these and see what it actually comes with. Okay, value viewers, as you can see, everything's unpacked. First impressions are good because, A, that was possibly the best packed box I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a lot of packed boxes, so I used to do it for a living. Secondly, this looks really cool, right? Uh, I had no idea what to expect. So that is full metal, oh, question mark, yeah, it's cold. Actually, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know yet, we'll see. It's top, it's top brass, whatever it is. So these are kind of, ooh, look at that, look at that! Look at that! It's my gen tie, whatever a gen tie is. I suppose I should know really. APU, engine crank. I suppose they would expect me to actually set this up for all the switches. Look at that. Okay, better not force that because that looks expensive. Friction knob. Anyway, that's that. So, I'm going to start putting that together and I will report back when I've got something to show you. Okay, welcome back. It's actually a couple of days since I recorded the previous bit and the reason is I've been trying several permutations of where to put the hotel to make it work and I'm finally just about to settle. First, we'll look at the Super Libra stick. Now, I started off having it over to the right of the desk here where you would kind of naturally want to have a, a hot house and I just couldn't get it comfortable that felt right. I tried an Aram mission, I tried flying an IL-2 mission and it wasn't right. So what I've done is I've got it right here, kind of where in the crotch where it actually should be because it is of course an F-18 stick. We've got it attached so I've built this whole uh, kind of desk thing that comes out like that and she pinches on to the desk there so it comes with these pretty hardcore steel clamps there you can see and uh, spaces there and it drops off on these adjustable steel um, hangers and then it just hangs in space now that is heavy it is very heavy this thing but it's solid and it hangs and it doesn't wobble which is great um, we've got the base here which is openable but I'd never really want to open it it's solid it's metal uh, got a leather kind of gaiter here we've got the extension here which is telescopic and I've extended it fully because I've never had a kind of full-size hotels before, um, up to whatever that is, eight, nine inches, something like that. Then we've got the actual stick itself, uh, materials again, steel, well, metal, I don't know what it is exactly. But the stick, I think that's metal because it's cold to touch, I think. I'll get it confirmed for the proper, proper video that we do. Quick look at the buttons, we've got the uh, trigger, which is a, a really top quality two-stage trigger, which I've never had a two-stage before, so it's really hard to push what I'm used to, but I'm used to just the plastic. X56, we've got the uh, the paddle I think it's called, which is just a kind of binary uh, switch underneath there. But a nose wheel steering switch, just a binary switch, probably can't see it, but it's around the back there. We've got, uh, now this is really interesting, uh, we've got these, these four-way hat switches for trim and for presumably that's going to be our sensor control switch here. Now the interesting thing is, uh, a standard they're set up as four-way switches, so switch, switch, switch switch. 
Now, we had a look in the uh, in the setting up, and I should show you here if you can see Sim App Pro essentially comes with these uh, this controller, and this allows you to uh, change the function of the switches. So this could be a four-way switch, or it can be a an axis. So axis, axis, because as well as being a switch, it has you know it has an axis feel where it has a, a certain amount of tension it can register as an axis now that's really useful it does not do that on the X56 whether that does that on the Warthog I don't know but it's a really cool feature because it means we can change what these buttons actually do okay SCS switch here I'm assuming that's what it is again four way standard or it could be axis up and down because there's kind of spring kind of soft spring loaded axis left and right so that's really interesting button there if you pickle this guy here, I haven't fully really figured out, and we will do, of course, for the proper video, but it feels um, up, down, left, and right. That's probably not available to turn that into an axis. That's probably just an up, down, left, right, and a push. And another thing I should say, these are obviously depressible push, push, push. I'm going to use that as my TD... I haven't decided yet, we'll see. Uh, another one on here. I'm not sure what it does in the real plane, but again, a standard four-way up down left and right or again through this guy here but I'm not going to show now but you can again turn it into a full axis Z axis or sorry Y axis and X axis so, so that's uh, that and that's the stick uh, complete Actually, the whole construction of this took about two hours to get everything roughly for the layman to do it uh, and it's all nuts and bolts and all of the tools you need to come with it although I use my own tools because it's just obviously nicer in terms of the action, and the action is, I, I'm not used to this vast amount of of, uh, uh, of action that we've got here. We've got from there to there, must be over a foot. I'm used to three inches, three inches. Getting used to that, I've had two games so far, and it is really hard for me to get used, but it is also amazing. A, because we've got so much resolution of movement here, we don't need any curves to add any curves. That's the kind of the weird thing that's getting used to all of my muscle memory says, do that and it rolls fully right. So now I go like that and it doesn't it barely moves at all. So it's going to say it's going to get used to. Um, so it's vast amount of movement and uh, it's going to sit obviously in my kind of groin area. Uh, in fact, why don't I set up properly and show you? So this is my chosen how I do it. So you've got that, I've got it tight against it there. I considered having this resting on the chair but for extra security, but it doesn't really need it. So that's where I am now. Back, forward, left, and right. Okay, or well, that lovely motion, just like the real F18. In terms of the feel of it, uh, really top notch. That's easily the best stick feel I've had. That saying, you know, all I've ever had really is an X56 and a little bit of a tribal warthog. But that's absolutely superb what it's got there. There's no, um, uh, what am I trying to say? It doesn't. It's solid, is what I'm trying to say. So there's no vibration transfer to the monitor. Now if there was, it would cause me problems because you can see I've got a camera just balanced on the top of that monitor. If there was, if vibration came through, uh, then that would shake about and uh, you'd have problems with tracker. I know I know that because I did, which is why I had to fit these legs there to sturdy everything up, put a bit of tension on. I can't find anything wrong with it. It's, it's you know, pretty much perfect. Um, uh, has some adjustment there. I haven't dared try and adjust it. Uh, it has USBs, uh, one USB there, and it has about six feet length of cable, uh, and the height is adjustable as well. And that's it, really. Uh, I'm going to move over to the Super Taurus. So the problem with having, you know, a crotch handle here is that I have no space for a keyboard. So I've got this guy here, which is a temporary solution until I find a better uh, kind of solution. So I move him out of the way. Here we have the Taurus quadrant with the the panel. Now the panel is it comes with the uh, a throttle, but you can remove it if you want. I don't know why you would, but you could. And it is, uh, it goes into the computer separately with a separate USB there, and a separate one to this here. So you can take this off and move it if you want, but it's obviously designed to work with the throttle quadrant. So, um, if we have a look at the, uh, the throttles first. So, um, if you're wondering why that drops down like that, that's, uh, I'm currently modifying it uh, the way I like it. So, first of all, stiffness. Now we've got a working friction lever here. Turn friction up, fri friction up, and it's very hard to move. And I don't know why you would ever want to do that, but you could if you're one of those guys. If you're like me with a little daisy hand, pull it back, and it's absolutely perfect. It almost drops, almost, almost drops. In fact, with a bit of wear and tear, that will probably kind of drop. You see, like that? 
there you go, that's what I want, that's actually what I want in the throttle. So that's worked perfectly for me. If you can hear that rough when it's moving, it's not weird. What it is is brushes. See, it's got these brushes. I don't actually know why they're there, but I guess it's just to simulate the real thing. Um, I'm hoping my mic doesn't pick that up, otherwise I'll have to move those brushes or cut them off or something because uh, it's just something I don't want, obviously. Um, so lovely action uh, in terms of movement. You've got, what is that? Um, I don't know, 10 inches, 11 inches, uh, at, at a guess, which is perfect. Uh, about the same, I think, as a Warthog, about twice as much as the uh, X56. So you certainly wouldn't want any more. Okay, now here's the interesting thing. Uh, like the Warthog, you've got these gates. Um, sorry, if I forget the words for them now, I'm just going to call them gates until I remember the word. You pull them up, and then you can go into idle. Okay? Uh, and then they're there to stop you going to idle by accident. Also, as well as that, you push them and you get to mill power, and then it hits what we call a detent. It becomes really stiff at that point, and you have to either lift these up and push it through to afterburner, or uh, you can actually force it through. Now, I didn't like that. I've had a couple of games and it's something I don't like. So uh, the reason is, if I force it through, which is really still what you're going to do, it shakes the whole table and I can get some vibration through to the camera and my track air goes woofy and it's just no good. So what I've done is actually erased last night. I erased these, I took the springs out of these uh, things and I probably shouldn't show Mr. Wing Wing this or they do not endorse it, but I've removed the springs and I've basically removed these catches, hence why they just kind of drop down into idle now. It doesn't really cause any problems in DCS or IO2, it's just how I want it. And the good thing about that is there's no more detent, it's just detent free, okay? So it just shows you can modify it if you want and like that. Uh, I haven't quite got it working so they both go all the way back but I haven't had time to finish it probably. Okay, uh, that's that. Buttons, again, uh, so sorry for the light, it's snowing outside, this is as best we get. And sorry for the mess, I'm currently transferring from my old i5 through to an AMD hence why all these screens are here and I'm trying to transfer the files over and, you know, that's how it is. Buttons, right, and this is really interesting. Um, this guy here is going to be TDC, it's SLU only, uh, so Y-axis SLU, Z-axis, um, X-axis SLU and depressible. Okay. Also two just buttons around there, ping ping, uh, that's that. Now I'm going to probably have to show this, there is also another SLU here, axis up down, up, down, I don't know what that is in the real plane, but I use that as my view, zoom, zoom, that's something I need to have. Now it's not as good as the turny wheel on the X56 for zoom, because it's spring loaded, so it goes ping, back, but it's just about good enough for what I want, which is great. Next, uh, sorry if you can't see this, we've got a guy here, now again, we've got uh, uh, up, down, forward, backwards, a four-way switch, or like all the others, which is amazing, we can convert that into an axis. Up axis, and left and right axis. And press, and press. So that's really awesome. So we've ended up having, well, we'll count them in a minute, but we've got another one here. Again, sorry if you can't see, but up, down, forward, backwards, or uh, Y axis up, Y axis down, X axis, X axis. So another fully uh, configurable switch. This guy down here is pullback temporary, or rest in middle, or push forward toggle. No idea what that's meant to do, and I'm not sure I'm sure I'm going to use it for yet, but it's there. Button down there for my cage on cage, and that. Oh, and you kind of light, you know, you light master switch, like with the Warthog uh, down there. So, in total, for the four way hat slash configurable uh, axes, we've got one, two, I don't think that one, three, four, five, six, a lot more than we've got on any of the other sticks, so that's really awesome, and plus you've got that little axis there, which is really good, so I'm trapped with that, um, again, I can't actually tell what it's cold, but I don't want to say it's metal when I'm not sure, so we'll get that confirmed for the proper video, uh, obviously you've got your button box here, I'm not going to spend too much time, you can see what it is, it's a bunch of iron switches, it's all very good, and it's lit up, um, got him, we can go under there, which is very cool, um, I'm not going to use these for the proper stuff, but I'm sure you know the sim heads will. It's a cool little thing there we can use for something, I don't know what, but it's going to come in handy. Uh, this uh, is really useful. Um, helmet mount display knob, or radar RDR cursor up and down maybe. Uh, really useful. Same thing there, we've got an extra one. And a bunch more buttons uh, over there. 
Um, so that's it. This is ad hoc video. It's not planned. I'm just going. As I say, it's super easy to set up. It's you just plug it in, DTS IL2 detect it, and you just set your buttons up. Uh, again, I'm linked on with just one handle there. Oh, I should say I'm linked on with one handle there rather than two, and I've had to put it on a coffee table. That's not permanent. That's until I figure out a way of attaching a second handle on there. Because you can see my desk is just a mushy mess at the moment. So far, really chuffed with it. More functionality than I could possibly use, and quality's top notch. And apart from that, I haven't found anything wrong with it. And there wasn't anything wrong. It's just I didn't like it, so I've removed it. Um, just think of trying to think of something intelligent to say. No, I think that's all I can say. Uh, you can get this with a z-axis so it can twist again I don't know why you would ever want it because if you're gonna buy this you're obviously gonna buy some pedals so that was my unboxing and first impressions video if you want to see part two video which is Kelso's Ball Professional look at this Hotas please look in the video description and I will link it there